Hi, welcome back to Bayorn's Tent. Today I thought it would be interesting to show you how to make a bag slash pouch for stones to use with a sling. The stuff you'd need to make one of these is pretty basic. You need some cord, scissors, hole puncher. A belt buckle doesn't really hurt. It does add quite a bit. And of course the material that you're making the bag out of in this case, um, a certain warg who found himself in the wrong place at the wrong time. No. I'm sure with most of you, the kind of material you'd get store-bought or whatever would probably be more straight and neater cut than this. But if you are working with something that is rough at the edges, then if you want the strap of the bag to be straight, then you can cut these little rough edges off to make the strap straighter and more rectangular. But if you want it to look a little more rough hewn then you can kind of leave some of these little things along the edge it, just to give it that kind of tattered look now of course uh, wow okay that was easier than I thought because <laughs> leather is sometimes a very stubborn material to cut so sometimes it takes a lot of patience to cut this stuff but this particular piece is turning out easier to cut than I expected Okay. Yeah, this is a little thinner. If you're making something meant for you know, being out in the outdoors like this, you want it to be strong enough so it'll last and really hold together because you think about it holding a bunch of stones, roughly maybe this big. Because that's what you usually use for a sling. With a slingshot, you have little marbles. This could be used for that too. But this is why I'm using this kind of leather, because it doesn't fray, it doesn't unravel, it won't come apart so easy. The last thing you want to do is be on the run and then have a little seam burst in the bag and have all the stones fall out. That would be disastrous. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight, unless you're a perfectionist, but, you know, it's up to up to you. It depends on what you're working with and what your goals are for it. Now when I cut the belt for this bag I want it to be kind of wide but I also want it to be skinny enough so that it fits this. This belt buckle. You can get these pretty much anywhere that sells fabric, any kind of arts and crafts store. But um, yeah I want to use this for the strap so I need to make sure that it'll actually fit through this thing. So that's something to keep in mind when cutting. So now that I've got the edge trimmed down enough, I need to cut out this one long piece and make sure that it will fit the buckle. Okay, so about here. Yep. So I'm going to hold the buckle right here and make a little trim. So this is my starting point. Now I just gotta go straight from there. Granted this strip did come out a little skinny, but at least this stuff doesn't really stretch. And it won't unravel either, so I don't think I really have much to worry about with this. I can always cut a new piece out if this one does happen to break, <laughs> but really, I doubt it will. And then comes trimming the other side. The reason I'm working from the edges like this is because 
This way, I know just how much I have to work with when I'm finished cutting the strap out. I've noticed this when cutting wood too, it's easier to work inward from the edges. And maybe this way, this strap might actually come out a little thicker than the one that I just cut out. This end here came out smaller than the other one down there, so I'm going to start from here to make sure that it doesn't come out too skinny. So this is a good thing about having plenty of leather to use, because then you have a little room for trial and error. So what I'm going to do is attach these two ends together for one strip. And then comes the third piece of this. I mean, the third leather strap of the belt part. Oh good, there's a fold right here. That makes it a lot easier to see which way to cut. What do you think? Here now comes the fun part. <laughs> Punching holes to make this thing fit. So the way you figure this out is you just slide this in through the belt buckle. And then you just pick a spot to punch the hole. Because you need this to fit in there. And once you get it secure to this, then you need to be able to fold this piece through and tie this down. And that's where the cord comes in. But before doing that, you need to punch the first hole in the middle. Alrighty. You just fold this down, hold it there, and then you punch two more holes here. So that way, you can tie it together with this so that it won't come undone. There's about 50 feet of cord on this thing. <laughs> Got plenty to work with. And especially for this little piece for the belt, you don't need all that much. All you need is to be able to tie a knot. Right here I'm using my signature trick of widening these holes a little bit by drilling it with a paintbrush. Because this cord is thick, it's a little harder to get it in a tiny hole, so. Yeah, see, you want it to be tight. You don't want this thing to come loose, ever. So if you feel that requires an extra knot, by all means, go ahead and add one. Better safe than spilled. And then you do the same thing for these two pieces of leather. Just punch the hole in there and then tie them together. Okay, so because this is going to go through this buckle, this way, you need to punch holes in it. A lot of them. And so, then comes the part of decorating this part of the strap with a bunch of holes. 
they don't have to be super close together. They can be some inches apart each, but you just need to have enough so that way you have some leeway to either loosen or tighten. Nice shoulder strap belt, and you can easily adjust it. Okay, now for the pouch itself. Okay, so, not very exacting when it comes to this, but what I am gonna do to make sure that it doesn't come out all weird is trim this side off because one of those rough edges is over here and there's one over here. So I'm gonna trim those down and see where it gets me. Because when you make a bag out of this stuff, the way it works is you take one big piece, you fold it, and then you sew or tie it up the sides and for that it has to be even so I guess this is the trick here part but we'll see what happens to make sure that it comes out more or less even when I cut it I'm just going to hold it together in a fold with some paper clips Here's what I'm going to try and do since this stuff is so thick. I'm going to cut one layer here while it's still folded. And then when this piece is cut, I'm going to lay the fold back down and then cut the next layer. Now normally when you do sewing like this, what you do is you sew up the sides here and then turn it inside out. But what I'm going to do to give it a more rough look, and especially because this cord is really thick, is just sew it together this way on the outside. And so now I just got to hold this down again so that when I'm punching the holes to go up the sides, it won't just come undone. In fact, I might even need a few more paper clips to hold it with. Before I forget. And a good way to test it out is run your finger underneath the line of holes, and if you can see your finger in them, then you've got them lined up right. Before I do the other side, I'm gonna make sure this one is bound up. Just get the cord in one hole first, then start widening the next one. Oh yeah, Newsflash was working with this kind of leather cord. There will be some shavings coming off. So just be aware of that for the future. So you just repeat that in and out process until you get to the end. And then once you've got enough remaining cord, you just do the knot at the end. Just tighten it down. how close you can get it to the end here. Okay, so this side is done. Now for the other side, you just repeat the same process. You punch the holes and then dig them out with the paintbrush and all that, and then tie them down, same way.
Okay, right now my back is hurting from having spent the last couple hours on the floor hovering over this stuff. Honestly, it is not fun when you're doing it like that. For a little while it's easier, but after a while when your back starts to hurt, you gotta move somewhere else. Okay, so the next part of getting this thing secure is to secure the straps. Now that should be easy enough because you're just punching a couple of holes near the top just above the seam here. Brush in there, and with the strap, I'm not planning on tying these on super tightly. What I'm going to do is make these loops pretty big to give the shoulder strap a bit of slack. But before tying them down, I need to add the holes in the belt. said the strap doesn't have to be completely tight on as long as the knot is secure so you can always make the this loop bigger if you want or just have it tight like this and even these little ends here you can always leave them if it looks decorative if you like that kind of thing Next comes the last piece of this puzzle, which is the drawstring. This way, you can close it up all the way, and you won't have your stones falling out of the bag when you're running around. And with this type of cord, the way it's responded to the holes and sides here, it'll stay where it is when you pull it tight. make a fold like this and then punch yeah that's good okay probably count how many holes there are too because that can make a difference in which way the drawstring comes out as opposed to where it enters the fabric. And you just repeat this process on the other side. In, out, in, out, in, and out again. Hope you've enjoyed this episode of Bayron's 10. Hope this video has been helpful and informative to you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some errands to run out in the woods. So I will see you next time in Wilderland. Maybe. Coffee is good stuff. Yeah, I was putting this thing on wrong. Hold on.
Okay. Yes, the fold is right here. So it goes in this way. And there you go. One side is almost done. Get this side tied down too, and you can't see it, can you? Sorry, I'm zoomed in way too far. Is there a hair caught in this thing? I don't know what that is. You just want to have plenty. And. Ah. Hmm. 